so one, once again i'll be starting this goc from the beginning fine so what general organic chemistry in general organic chemistry we will be studying in organic chemistry we study mainly about living beings uh, this was uh, given by bergelius according to bergelius vital force theory inside the living being there is a special kind of force that is vital force and that force is responsible for synthesizing organic compounds inside the living beings and uh, the student of bergelius wohler proved it wrong by synthesizing first organic compound inside the lab and it was urea that is carbamide how you prepared it that uh, already i told you ammonium cyanate on heating will get converted into urea or carbamide and this reaction is known as isomerization reaction and the second organic compound was acetic acid and who synthesized it kolbe how he synthesized it carbon plus h2 in an electric arc will be giving you ethane acetylene this ethane or acetylene is an organic compound and on hydration with h2so4 will give ch3 cho and the ch3 cho on oxidation will be giving acetic acid the third organic compound synthesized in lab was methane and bartholet synthesized it and uh, acids which are there there in living beings or living organism tartaric acid shile isolated it and it is there there in grapes citric acid is there in lemon and malic acid is there in apple in lactic and lactic acid is there in milk urea isolated by raule and it was there in human urine hypouric acid liebig isolated it and is there there in horse urine certainer morphine it is there there in opium certainer extracted it from morphine from opium and that is morphine and this also i told you that compounds of carbon with hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur chlorine chlorine bromine iodine are organic but co and co2 are not organic so that is why this definition was distorted and they gave a let modern definition that is a more accurate one that hydrocarbon and their derivatives are called hydrocarbons and their derivatives are called organic compounds c this reaction is already done if you will take ch4 and that ch4 reacts with chlorine then in presence of sunlight will give you ch3 cl will be giving ultimately ch2 cl2 ch cl3 and finally will be giving you perchloromethane that is carbon tetrachloride or pyrene that is ccl4 now there is a question why organic compounds are so large in number although they are made of sirf only these 10 elements only these 10 elements are there there in the organic compound then also organic compounds number is so so large reason is that is approximately 6 billion that is 10 to the power 7 almost so what's the reason reason is catenation reason is isomerism reason is tendency to combine carbon with other non metals such as hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur halogen because bond energy of all these elements is almost same that's the reason of large number of organic compound and second uh, important property of organic compound that their physical and chemical properties are unique now see what are organic compounds and what inorganic compounds are organic compounds are volatile inflammable while inorganic compounds are non volatile melting and boiling points of organic compounds are very low while the melting points and boiling points of inorganic compounds are high organic compounds are generally insoluble in water fairly soluble in polar solvents what about the inorganic compounds inorganic compounds are soluble in water and other polar solvents organic compounds are bad conductor of electricity and inorganic compounds are good conductor of electricity organic compounds do not ionize and are covalent in nature do not ionize and are covalent in nature while the inorganic compounds are electrovalent ionic in nature 
the organic compound reactions are very slow these reactions are slow molecular covalent reactions and their yield will also be less because of these side reactions while in case of inorganic compounds their reactions will be fast because will be ionic and yield will also be good now what next is organic compounds are thermally stable and uh, inorganic compounds are not thermally stable not so stable organic compounds belong to a same homologous series in inorganic compounds such series is not there the composition means organic compounds are made of only 10 elements while inorganic compounds are made of approximately 100 elements the structure of organic compounds carbon in organic compound or in any compound is always covalent and there different elements will be having different valencies actually in organic chemistry means the chemistry of metals in general that's not true non metals can also be inorganic in nature but in general chemistry of metals that is inorganic chemistry and chemistry of carbon generally is organic chemistry the molecular mass of organic compound is very high and are stable while the mass of mass of inorganic compound is not that high and are less complex and are less stable organic compound show isomerism because pi bond is directional in nature while inorganic compounds in inorganic compounds ionic bond will be there and that ionic bond generally will be non directional so will not be ionic compounds will not be showing isomerism but covalent inorganic compounds will also be showing isomerism organic compounds are combustible in nature while inorganic compounds are not combustible in nature organic compounds may be liquid gas or solids but inorganic compounds usually are solids and what about the coordination compounds what coordination compounds are coordination compounds are organic or inorganic coordination compounds are the link between organic and inorganic compounds now see source of the organic compound this all we have not done there there in ncrt in ncrt all these things are not there but questions are there from this all so i am Uh, teaching you this all from my personal notes now see in nature how, how what's the percentage of organic compound in nature only 10% organic compounds are there remaining 90% organic compounds are synthetic means we have to synthesize them them in lab but in nature only 10% compounds are there they are in the form of plants animals fungi that is microorganism and coal in plants carbohydrates are there glucose sucrose starch and cellulose are examples of carbohydrates acids esters vegetable oil vitamins gum alkaloids essential oils perfumes alcohols acetones all these are organic compounds present in plants now in animals proteins hormones fats and urea is there fungi or microorganism in them alcohol acid antibiotics that is penicillin streptomycin tetracycline and vitamins by fermentations can be there coal in coal coal tar that aromatic hydrocarbon phenol dyes drugs etc are there hetero many more heterocyclic compounds are also there perfumes are also there they are in coal from there you can get all such things from natural gas and petroleum we can get gasoline that is petrol kerosene lubricants vaseline paraffin wax etc in lab what organic compounds can be synthesized are more than 90% in ratio and these are drugs dyes fibers rubber vitamins from petroleum and coal all these things can be synthesized there in the lab in the factory what are the importance of organic compounds organic compounds uh, your food is an organic compound in food carbohydrates proteins vitamins fats and 
enzymes are there and uh, in the process of digestion these foods will be absorbed by your body clothes can be organic that is cotton silk wool nylon rayon dacron etc soap is also there they are involved there in our life cosmetics perfumes oils plastics explosives tnt that is tri nitrotoluene nitroglycerin rubber dye stuffs paper insecticides are are also organic compounds medicines and almost every natural compound in life are usually organic in organic chemistry what next topic is bonding and overlapping see as i already told you organic compounds are covalent while inorganic compounds can be ionic as well as covalent both carbon in ground state is divalent and carbon in excited state is tetravalent and in divalent state it is unstable so does not exist there there in the divalent state there in the nature in ground state while in excited state that is more stable and will exist there in nature promotion of electron in ground state when electrons are there then there will be promotion of those electrons from 2s2 2pz from 2s2 2pz from 2s2 2pz and energy required is 120 kcal per mole or 500 1.6 kJ per mole but this energy is more than regained by the concurrent formation of chemical bonds all four angles in carbon are 109 degree 28 minutes are 109 degree 28 minutes means all the four angles there in organic chemistry will be equal but not in one plane lebel and wanthoff regular tetrahedron wanthoff and lebel gave this regular tetrahedron and bond angle confirmed by modern concept of covalency based on quantum mechanics now see what about the quadi uh, what about the inorganic compounds see inorganic compound as i already told you are ionic and covalent both electron spin in two atomic orbitals taking part in the bond formation must be opposite see if one atom is having if one atom is having electron like this then second atom must have electron like this both electrons which will be overlapping must have opposite spin then only they can overlap and uh, they should be unpaired then only pairing can be possible so and their spin must be opposite dumbbell shaped p orbital will form a stronger pi bond as compared to a spherically symmetrical s orbital sigma bond <coughs> so this is all about the organic and inorganic compounds now see what next is energy of s orbital will be least and more than that sp will be having energy and p orbitals will be having highest energy so this will be the order of the uh, uh, energy level of orbitals now see s plus s that overlapping is permissible and bond formed will be sigma s plus pz will also be permissible and bond formed will be sigma s plus sorry pz plus pz bond formed will be sigma that is also permissible px plus px will be forming pi bond and py plus py after overlapping will be possible will be making pi bond so this these were permissible overlapping and now we are forbidden overlapping s plus px not possible s plus py not possible px plus py not possible px plus pz not possible py plus pz not possible so these are forbidden overlapping and this was permissible overlapping see in sp hybridization shape will be collinear that will be oval we can say oval it will be like this oval shape collinear and the bond angle will be 180 degree 
and percentage S character will be 50. And relative powering of overlapping with reference to S orbital will be 1.93. SP2 hybridization, that is trigonal planar in shape that is already done there in chemical bonding, or we will be doing this there in chemical bonding. Shape, sorry, bond angle will be 120 degree and percentage S character will be 33. And 1.99, all SP3 are on same plane, plane perpendicular to PZ is unhybridized. Now CSP3 hybridization, that is regular tetrahedron, bond angle will be 109.5 degree, percentage S character will be 25, and relative power of overlapping will be two with reference to S. So this is all about the uh, hybridization in terms of organic chemistry. Now determination of hybridization in organic compounds. How you can decide the hybridization shown by any element there in any organic compound that will purely be decided by the number of sigma bonds that will purely be decided on the basis of number of sigma bond. See, this carbon is having two sigma bonds. Two sigma bonds, so hybridation will be sp. This carbon will be having one and two sigma bonds, so hybridation will be sp. And what about this carbon? One, two, three, four. Four sigma bonds are there. Since sigma bonds are four in number, so hybridation will be sp. So on the basis of number of sigma bonds, we can predict the hybridation shown by any element there, there in the organic chemistry. And what about the pi bond? Pi bonds will never take part there in the bond formation. So on the basis of number of sigma bonds, one thing, and that is NMR technique, that is classical one. And on the basis of number of sigma bonds plus lone pair, that is electron diffraction technique, there's a modern technique. Here, you'll only be considering bond pairs, and here it is lone pair plus bond pair both. So this is the modern one will give you the exact shape of the geometry of the molecule. Now see, this is already discussed that in resonance, sigma bond will never be taking part. Sigma bond will never be considered there in resonance, while pi bond, positive charge, negative charge, free electron, free radical, that is, and lone pair will be considered. In hybridization, only sigma will be considered, never pi bond, and positive charge will never be considered, free electron also will never be considered, only lone pair, negative charge, and pi bond will be, sorry, sigma bond will be considered there, there in the hybridization, never pi bond. Now see, this was uh, all about the comparison of resonance with hybridization. Now, what next is, see, if one electron is clockwise and second electron there in another orbital is clockwise, then they will be overlapping, then they will be overlapping and uh, both are having positive positive sign, then it will be overlapping, then will be, sorry, then it will be anti-overlapping, anti-bonding, fine, that will be attractive, in nature and overlapping will be possible. Overlapping in phase, overlapping in phase. But if one is plus and second is minus, if one is plus, if one is plus, if one is plus and second is minus, then out of phase, then that overlapping won't be possible. This is in phase and this will be out phase. This is in phase and this will be, this is in phase and this will be out phase. If uh, both electrons are having plus, this is plus sign, this is plus, both are plus plus, then that will be bonding molecular orbital and overlapping will be possible, attractive in nature, additive in nature, constructive in nature, and that will be known as in phase. But if suppose this is having plus sign and this will be having minus sign, then that will be out of phase and it will be anti-bonding molecular orbital. It will be anti-bonding molecular orbital. Node will be there between them. Bonding will not be possible. That will be subtractive in nature. 
that will be destructive in nature. See here, this theory is written. This was not there in your NCRT. When atomic orbitals with light signs plus plus, then in phase addition, constructive attraction, overlap each other. Other other a bonding molecular orbital will be formed. It has high electron density between the two atoms, thus minimizing nuclear repulsion and permitting the nuclear nuclei to be closer to each other than in the unbounded state. It has lower energy than the individual separated atomic orbitals. Attraction force between protons of one atom and electrons of the other atom would be greater than the repulsive forces in this case. So now second case that uh, both will be having opposite signs, then will be out of phase, will be subtractive in nature, overlapping will not be possible, bonding will not be possible, will be anti-bonding in nature. So now what next is, see if atomic orbitals and atomic orbitals combine together, then molecular orbitals will be formed. Half of the molecular orbital will be anti-bonding in nature and remaining half in, uh, molecular orbital will be bonding in nature. If both electrons will be having opposite spin, then overlapping will be there. But if both will be having same spin, then no overlapping will be possible. Only repulsion will be there between them. If same spin, both electrons com of uh, combining atoms will be having. Then see, as I told you, atomic orbitals of uh, uh, and atomic orbitals of another atom will combine together to form molecular orbital. Half of the molecular orbital will be bonding in nature and remaining half of the bonding molecular orbital will be anti-bonding in nature. Now see this table is here, then uh, this is, uh, this you should remember, bond length, the, uh, nothing is there to explain, bond length and bond energy is there, C single bond, C bond length, C double bond, C, C triple bond, C, C single bond, C in benzene, C single bond, O, C double bond, O, C, sorry, O, H, and what their energy is, that is also written here. So just you have to go through this all. You should remember this all because all these things can be there, there in your examination. Now see what next is. Coaxial overlapping. See if two atomic orbitals, if two atomic orbitals overlap each other in the same plane at right angles to each axis, that is called lateral overlapping, that is called coaxial overlapping. Now see, as uh, we have discussed sigma and pi, two types of covalent bonds can be there. <coughs> and uh, now here we'll be talking about the differences between them. Sigma bond will be formed, sigma bond will be formed by the head-on overlapping or the end-on overlapping or the axis-on overlapping of the orbitals. That is S plus S or S plus PZ. S plus PZ. It can never be PX or PY. What about pi bond? Pi bond will be formed by the sidewise or lateralwise overlapping. That is PX plus PX or PY plus PY. PZ, PZ will always be forming sigma bond. Sigma bond is always cylindrical and the charge symmetry about bond axis will be there. Here, maximum charge density in the cross-sectional plane of the orbitals. In sigma bond, free rotation is possible while since pi bond is directional, so free rotation will not be possible. Frozen rotation will be there. And pi bond will be having high energy. C, only one sigma bond can exist between two atoms. Sigma bond can exist independently by pi, but pi bond always exists if sigma bond, single bond is there, then only pi bond can be there. So pi bond in absence of sigma bond alone can't be possible. Extent of overlapping there in head-on or excess bond will be more than the, than the pi bond. 
so head on overlapping will be like this and pi bond overlapping will be like this so this is sigma bond and this is pi bond so here extent of overlapping will be more here extent of overlapping will be less now see what next is now see suppose there is a covalent bond between these two atoms which atom is more electronegative x is more electronegative so one electron will be shifted to here and another electron will be shifted to here c and x two elements are there if suppose both are having same electronegativity then one electron will be shifted here and second electron will be shifted here so this carbon will be having one free electron and this x atom will be having one free radical electron this is carbon free radical and this is halogen free radical now see in second case when this uh, x will be more here electronegativity electronegativity of c is equal to x and here electronegativity here here just a minute ah huh? just so uh if the electronegativity of both elements will be same then this bond will be breaking and one electron will be equally distributed to both these atoms but now see here if the electronegativity of if the electronegativity of halogen or x is more than the carbon then this one electron pair this bond will be shifting here and this x will become minus charged and this x will become minus charged and the c will become plus charged so this is heterolytic cleavage and this is homolytic cleavage this is what it is written cleavage or breaking of bond can be homolytic that is symmetrical and can be heterolytic or unsymmetrical if these two atoms are having same electronegativity then the splitting of this pair of electron will be equal to each of the two atom this carbon will be having one electron so carbon free radical and this a will also be having one free electron so that will be a free radical this is homolytic cleavage but see if the electronegativity of carbon is lesser than a then there will be breaking of this bond and since a is more electronegative so that pair of electron will be that bond will be going to a and this a will become minus charged and c will become plus charged this is heterolytic cleavage or unsymmetrical cleavage this homolytic cleavage see how i have written half headed or fish with the arrow half headed half headed and this is full headed this is full headed arrow now see this is non polar electronegativity is same means non polar non polar which are having almost the same electronegativity gives this type of cleavage and products will always be free radical and here it is polar and sufficient difference in electronegativity between the two elements there in that compound will be there and because of that unequal distribution of electron will be taking place heterolytic cleavage of the bond will be taking place and this y since is more electronegative electronegativity of y is greater than x that's why this x will become plus and y will become minus charged c ch3 whole thrice carbon ch3 whole thrice carbon br ch3 whole thrice carbon br this is tertiary butyl bromide on cleavage will be giving br minus and ch3 whole thrice c plus that is carbo cation heterolytic cleavage will be there and uh, what are the conditions required for this homolytic cleavage or symmetrical fission the conditions required is h e l p r what this h e l p r is h means heat e means electricity l means light light means ultraviolet light heat means 500 degrees centigrade temperature 
500 degrees centigrade temperature or more than that and p is peroxide p is peroxide and r is reaction so heat electricity light and radical initiators that is organic peroxides or catalyst peroxides are free radical initiator and is a free radical and such reactions are called free radical reactions which are very high speed reactions see these there they have given these two examples so you should go through this one and hydrolytic cleavage uh, what are the factors responsible for this hydrolytic cleavage it is influenced by presence of ions due to acids bases water or alcohol fine so one will be anion this will be anion and this will be cation so cation and anion will be formed because of the hydrolytic cleavage now see what next is oxygen iodine and c6h5 hold twice nh phenylamine that is free radical inhibitors 14 benzoquinone or paraquinone or orthoquinone is also free radical inhibitor these reactions of homolytic which are free radical reactions so these reactions are carried out in gas phase or in solvents inert medium such reactions are homolytic or free radical reactions while hydrolytic reactions are favored by polar solvents for the homolytic cleavage energy required will be energy required for a chemical bond into a pair of neutral species is usually referred to as the bond dissociation bond dissociation energy and that the energy required for hydrolytic bond fission is always greater than that for homolytic bond fission due to electrostatic force of attraction between ions now see this all about uh, hydrolytic and homolytic cleavage is over now see what next is see as you wrote there this carbon free radical sometimes carbon can be plus sometimes carbon can be minus depending upon the electronegativity of another species if that species is having that second element is having same electronegativity what carbon is having then this will be formed and if that element will be having more electronegativity than carbon carbon will be having lesser and here it will be equal to the carbon electronegativity of that element is equal to carbon if that element is having greater electronegativity than carbon then carbon will be free sorry positively charged that is carbo cation and if that element will be having lesser electronegativity if that element will be having lesser electronegativity than carbon then carbon ion will be formed so in this way different species will be formed and all these were reactive intermediates so because of this homolytic or hydrolytic cleavage reactive intermediates will be formed their energy will be low and but unstable short lived 10 to the power minus 6 seconds will be their lifetime to a few seconds or co covalent it can be ion it can be radicals if ions are there then such radicals are inorganic radicals and if ions are not there charge is not there then such radicals will be known as covalent or organic can't be isolated but are detected by spectroscopic method or trapped chemically or their presence is confirmed by indirect evidence often reactive intermediates such as carbocations and free radicals have more delocalized structures than their parent reactants c now here will be the sol just to go through the sol now reagents can be of three types reagents can be of three types reagents can be electrophilic reagents can be nucleophilic 
and reagents can be MB5. Electrophilic reagents, as I already told you, will be electron deficit and will be known as Lewis acids, electron deficits, that is electrophilic in nature. What about nucleophiles? Nucleophiles are Lewis bases, are Lewis bases, electron rich, and nucleophiles. This can be plus charged or neutral. This nucleophile can also be negatively charged or neutral. Now see, since it is uh, electron deficient, so it is oxidizing agent. It is oxidizing in nature. And this will be reducing in nature. So will be reducing agent. See the examples of this all. H3O plus that is hydronium ion or oxonium ion. NO2 plus that is nitronium ion. NO plus that is nitrosonium ion. H plus that is hydrogenium ion. Cl plus that is chloronium ion, bromonium ion, benzene disonium ion, then CF3 plus that is methyl carbonium ion. Order of electrophilicity of halogen, chlorine will be most electrophilic in nature and iodine will be least electrophilic in nature. Now see this was about the electrophilic reagents. What about nucleophilic reagent? They must be having incomplete octate and here octet must be complete. And lone pair must be there. Lone pair must be there. And these are electron rich species. So basic, Lewis basis, reducing agent. Their order of nucleophilicity will be F minus will be having least and I minus will be having maximum. Then Br minus, then C minus. And least is F minus. Now see what MB files are. MB files are organic compounds in which carbon is bonded with electronegative atom, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur by multiple bonds behave as electrophile as well as nucleophiles both. It will be electron deficient as well as electron rich. In different places, it will be showing different behavior. Dwell, that is amphoteric. For example, water, ROH, RPH2, H3O plus. Now charged. Electrophilic reagents, which are charged and neutral, both examples are written here. These all are charged. These all are charged nucleophiles. These are neutral nucleophiles. These are neutral electrophiles. And these are neutral MB files. Charged MB files are not there. So this is all about the reagents. These reagents are very important. Now see here, there is a point that CH3 whole 4 N plus, it is neither electrophile nor nucleophile. Why it is not electrophile? It is not electrophile because it is having completely filled orbital, so won't be able to gain electron. And since there is no lone pair of electrons, so won't be able to donate that lone pair of electron to, that's why it is not, that's why it is not nucleophile. They have given examples of MB files also, Azines, CH3CN, HCHO, all these were MB files. So this was all about the electrophiles, nucleophiles, and MB files. Uh, now see, nucleophilicity and basicity we won't be doing. Then we will be doing. This dipole moment there in next class, we'll be first doing dipole moment and then Historic hindrance and inductive effects, etc. We will be doing this all. In NCRT, it is not given properly, so that's why I'm doing it from here. So that's all for today. Thank you very much, all of you. And uh, Maisha and Arslan, you have not sent me the marks. How many marks you have scored? Please check it. And the answer sheet is also there. Solution is also there with you. So just please go through it and send me the uh, marks. How many marks you have scored? Fine. Okay. Thank you very much.